If you're looking for a luxury four-seat coupe built in the 2010s that also handles like a sports car, then you might as well just buy a BMW 4 Series coupe and turn this video off now, because this car doesn't actually have any rivals in that category. The Mercedes C-Class coupe and the Audi A5 are both excellent cars, but when it comes to the out-and-out -out handling and, and sports car performance, you're just not going to get it from those cars. So of course this is a great BMW, but there is a lot to learn about it, and if you stick around for this video then I'm going to tell you all about this car and why you might want to consider buying one. So the 4 Series is a sports coupe with four seats built from 2013 to 2020. It's what BMW used to call the 3 Series coupe, but then they rationalised all their model lines to be uh, even numbers for coupes and uh, odd numbers for saloons and others. So this car actually has a longer wheelbase, a wider track, and it's got a lower centre of gravity than the BMW 3 Series on which it's based. So it is definitely a very different car and it's definitely built for a different purpose. Now with this being the 430i, the old school BMW fans amongst us would immediately assume that this has a six cylinder engine, which is what I did. But no, sadly with the downsizing trend we have, this is of course a four cylinder. Now you could get a six cylinder in this car, but you had to go up to the 435 or the 440. It is still a very powerful engine of course. It's turbocharged and it's got 248 brake horsepower, which is a plenty of power, which means that you're going to do 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds. With this car being rear wheel drive, it'll just launch you out of a corner. The, the downside is of course that you don't get that glorious six cylinder noise, so you will have to spec a, a bigger engine in this car if you want that nice noise. BMW know how to make a nice dashboard. This car, it feels like it's a proper industrial machine, but at the same time it feels like some sort of luxury industrial machine, if ever such a thing existed. It's all very silver and black. And then you've got this left-hand part of the, the centre console, which separates the passenger away from, from you. It kind of gives the centre of the dashboard a very slight angle towards the driver, and it, it means that this car is kind of focused a little bit more on being a driver's car. The dials in front, they are, of course, very serious. They've got this very simple font that tells you exactly what's going on. So it's not a full digital dashboard in this car. It's got physical dials, but they've integrated that little screen into the sort of surrounding part of the dials, and you can't see the edge of it in most lights. And it looks really good. It, it looks like it's just part of the background. These leather seats are really comfortable, and they really do hold you in in the corners now. You can adjust the bolstering electronically to hug you tighter, and you can also adjust the, the thing underneath your thighs, which has never really done anything for me, but maybe that's useful. You can adjust the seats every which way you want electronically. Again, this wasn't standard because nothing's standard on a BMW, but if you get these leather seats, they are fantastic. The steering wheel goes in and out, up and down. You can adjust it to be the perfect driving position. You're low down in the car. Although it feels like a, obviously a luxury car, it still feels very sporty and the steering is super light. It's just a very easy car to drive. In the modern day, that's what we, we're all very spoiled with these cars because they don't have heavy steering, they don't have any heavy clutch to use, everything's just dead simple, you've got this computer gear shift which you know you just kind of like tap it, there's no effort involved. So even in a sporty car like this which is you know very capable in the corners, it's a very quick car, it's not kind of like uh, telling you that it's very eager and ready to go like some performance cars, it's just super smooth, super easy to, to drive. And of course that's what you want, that's the luxury aspect of this coupe. Now all of these cars came with the iDrive system, which is BMW's infotainment system, which has the screen up here, at least a 6.5 inch screen, and the ability to control it instead of touchscreen, which uh, you know is always a bit difficult when you're trying to fumble around for it when you're moving at speed. You've got the little rotary dial down here. The rotary dial also has a little touchpad in the middle, which allows you to type in with your finger and draw the letters that you want and it's quite funny seeing your terrible or, or good handwriting, if you've got good handwriting, I don't, uh, come up on the screen when you're trying to type things in. So you've got an excellent sized door pocket that fits the fat bottom bottle no problem. You've got two big cup holders in the centre which again fit the fat bottom bottle no problem. A centre console cubby which is kind of small but it has got this nice comfortable armrest on top of it that can be adjusted back and forward. There's no sunglasses holder up there, now I don't know if that was an option or not but it might well have been got a, a glove box as well which is you know average size. In terms of the boot space it's quite a big boot you do get a lot of room in there but it's got quite a narrow opening which is often the case with these booted uh, coupes and saloons. Now you had to option and you didn't have it as standard but you could option for the seats to fold flat and that meant that you could fit longer items through the middle and it, it does you can fit quite a lot of things in there as long as they're the right size to fit in into that space.
ride quality, now that's always a, a question with a BMW, isn't it? What is it like when you're on a sort of quite bumpy road? Well, it is quite firm. Now this is the M Sport version, so it's got firm suspension, it's got stiffer anti-roll bars and different spring rates and stiffer shock absorbers. Run flat tyres, which all of these cars had run flat tyres as standard. All that considered, it's, it's okay. You just have to accept that if you're buying this car with this M Sport package that, you know, you're doing it because you want a car that handles well and ride comfort comes second. This car's got the very smooth eight-speed auto box. Now, some of these cars came with a six-speed manual, but most of them had an auto. And it's super smooth, it's dead quick at changing, and you can control it with the paddles on the steering wheel in this M Sport model. And of course, you can also do it with the gear selector here as well by uh, pushing it back or forward, which is the proper way to select gears. Mercedes seem to do it left to right, which just feels completely wrong. You get a proper pulley-uppy, old-school, buttony handbrake instead of an electronic one. Handling-wise, of course, you just can't really get better than a BMW Coupe. For this kind of car, it just has no competition. For a luxury four-seat car that, you know, is, is fairly practical and, and luxurious, it handles like it's, to use that phrase, like it's on rails. Uh, <laughs> it is very easy to sort of position the car in, in where you want it to be around the corner, and it just feels like it flows so well. Now, obviously, this car's got the firm suspension. It's got even more of a setup for sporty driving, and it really does show, because if you're comparing it to its rivals like the Audi A5, which is, you know, a front-wheel drive car, it's, it's not bad to drive, but and then you've got the Mercedes C-Class, which is rear-wheel drive, but it's obviously set up more to be a, a cruiser. It's got that Mercedes thing going on. This is the car you want if you want to have fun in the corners. It actually has different driving modes, which you can select down here on the centre console. You've got Comfort, which is kind of like your normal standard driving mode. And then you've got Sport, which uh, firms up the steering and makes this car just a this little bit better in the corners, a little bit more fun to drive, makes the throttle response a little bit quicker. And then you've got Sport Plus, which actually turns off the traction control, or at least it tells you it does. On the opposite end of the scale, you've got Eco Pro, which basically turns the car into a Toyota Prius and uh, completely deadens the throttle put your foot down it just hardly does anything at all it's really quite strange it means that you're going to end up burning a little bit less fuel now speaking of fuel economy this car will get an average of 37 miles per gallon which you know it's quite good isn't it for 250 horsepower and a fairly heavy coupe but it's not going to set any records if you want e economy then obviously you go for a 420d which will get you 50 miles per gallon With this being a four-seat coupe that can ostensibly fit adults in the back, we uh, better ask backseat JJ what he thinks of uh, the space back there. What do you think, pal? No problem, mate. Well, JJ, surprisingly, it's actually very spacious back here. For this kind of car, it's definitely best in class. It's better than the A5, it's better than the C-Class. If I really do sit up straight, then my head's touching the roof, but I've got uh, quite a bit of legroom, actually, um, so it is very spacious. These windows, they don't open, but that's kind of standard for uh, this kind of car. There are no Jesus handles in this car. Just this little hook here for hanging your, your business shirt or whatever. And then I've got this armrest here with cup holders built into it and a little tray section here which will fit a mobile phone and then ventilation down here. I've even got a little tiny padded armrest here for my elbow, which is nice. All right, cheers, mate. Yeah, thank you. So this coupe version of the car I'm in is known as the F32 for the BMW geeks out there. But there were other body styles available for this car. The F33 convertible, which had a folding metal hardtop roof, which meant that the car was just as refined as this one, but you could get the roof down. Unfortunately, because of that extra weight, it's more of a cruiser than it is a sports car. So you do have to consider that. If you wanted a bit more practicality, there was the F36, which is the four-door Grand Coupe version of, of this car. Now that still had the sort of same sporting credentials as this car, but it had an extra pair of doors at the back and just made it a little bit easier to get in and out of and a little bit more spacious. It also gave you some extra boot space as well. It's a really great looking car, this car. I really, really do like the look of it. It's not quite as classically pretty as the Audi A5, which has got that American, very small American muscle car look to it. But then I am a fan of these, these coupe shapes. Once you're moving at speed on like a dual carriage or a, or a motorway, it is quite a refined and comfortable car. It's a really great motorway cruiser because obviously the Germans know exactly what they're doing when it comes to setting cars up for high-speed autobahns. The only thing I would say is that because this has got quite wide tyres on it, you do get a bit of tyre noise. That's probably the main thing that I can hear. I can't hear the engine, I can't really hear the wind noise, but I can hear that tyre noise. But it is, of course, an excellent Grand Tour, a car that you can soak up miles in. 
BMWs, they never cease to be funny when it comes to trim levels and equipment levels. It's absolutely ridiculous how many different options there were for this car, to the point where there's probably not any two similar 4 Series out there when it comes to what it's been specced with. So yeah, this car is all over the place in terms of its specification. It's got a Harman Kardon stereo system, which sounds fantastic. It's really well equipped in certain ways, and then in others, it's ridiculous. It's like missing the, the cubby hole underneath the center console. The same for the smaller glove box on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. There's nothing there. There's a, there's a sort of indent for it where you could put uh, a door. If you wanted to fit one into this car, you would have to saw a hole into the dashboard to do so. So my advice when, you, when it comes to buying one of these cars, obviously you've got things like SE spec, you've got M Sport, you've got the luxury edition. You need to just get in the car and have a play with what, what toys it's got and see because it'll, it'll just have some sort of all sorts of random things on it. It was available with a heads-up display, it was available with a, a 360 surround view parking camera but that was obviously quite a rare option. So that's the BMW 4 Series. It's a highly competent Grand Tourer. It's a luxury car with sporting credentials. It's a really well put together car um, with all the features that you could possibly desire if you spec them when it was new. And it is a, a very much a, a true to the, the sort of BMW ethos of building these quality cars that handle well. And, and look the part as well, it's a really great looking car. So really when it comes down to it, when you're choosing this car or you're choosing an A5 or a, or a C-Class, it really is down to how you feel about the car because they are all excellent cars. This car's obviously got the edge when it comes to handling, but you know, you might not like how this car looks or you might prefer the uh, sort of classiness of the interior of the Mercedes and uh, they're, all, they're all really good choices to, to go for. But you know, I, I certainly would uh, would own one of these cars it's a really really fantastic car so thank you again to my mate joe for for lending me this car and thank you to you guys for watching please give a like and thumbs up to the video if you've enjoyed it uh, if you want to see a review of the c-class and the a5 which obviously were the chief rivals for this car then i'm going to put them both there and yeah thank you very much for watching and i'll uh, see you in the next video